Thanks for joining me this week on the show. Happy Thanksgiving to my fellow U.S. compatriots. Happy fall season. We are sliding into the holidays. And so I wanted to just have a little check-in, have a chat with you today about how we navigate these holiday gatherings, these family events throughout the year, offer a little bit of perspective to help you sail through with as much ease and grace as is possible. And I'm going to share with you one of my hot tips for staying the course and sailing through, keeping energy going and enjoying all that there is in this beautiful season. Thanks so much for joining me. I know you're going to get a lot out of the show. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Living in a stressful world doesn't mean you have to give up on happiness. Instead, you can shift your perspective of stress and discover how to live your life in flow. Welcome to Happified. I'm your host, Susie Vine. Join me for inspiration and interviews with folks who are shining their light in the world in the areas of positive mindset, health, and wellness. I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome back. I am so happy to have you with me this week for another episode of the show. This time, again, a solo episode while I dive into some topics that feel particularly relevant this week here in the U.S. It is Thanksgiving, and we are diving into the holiday season, or as I like to break it out into two words, holly, as in that prickly, thorny, pretty red berry stuff, and days, as in dazed and confused, because I think that's really how so many of us feel moving into this whirlwind. I was talking with a friend in Canada. I think they're smart for moving it forward a month and dividing these two holidays. But here in the States, we go full tilt through to New Year's, and then we wish for the day to sleep it all off. But hopefully with some of these tips or a little bit of perspective, you can feel a little less dazed, a little less overwhelmed as you're coming into these holiday events that we all want to be these lovely, connected opportunities to be with the people most important to us. So thanks for joining me today. I'd like to take a look at a couple of different topics. We'll kind of move through the whole process from the build up, the anticipation, the very day of, I'll let you in on my secret weapon, and then how to help resolve things and help things come back to balance after we make it through the day together, the events on the agenda, and we move forward through this holidays season. I don't know about you. Um, I don't have a huge family. Myself, I have my brother. My mom has several siblings. My father has one. And so we have spread out enough across the country that holidays tend to be fairly small gatherings. But I know that for some, and in my childhood, we had a house full of 30 plus people coming and going, all ages coming together. The table was a smorgasbord and it was a really festive event, but things were a little bit different there. And we'll get into that as I go along. But I remember from my childhood, just loving the revelry, that little bit of chaos, the delicious food, um, everybody kind of sacking out in chairs and stretching out on the floor to rest their bellies afterwards. And I think ultimately that peace after a meal, that feeling of connection is the most important thing. And so above all, in whatever span you're able to, in whatever way, whether it's with the friends and the family that you have chosen to make, whether it is the extended family that make you roll your eyes and bite your tongue, I hope that you are leading into a lovely holiday. One question that always comes up um, as I've been talking with friends and even clients coming into this season is, you know, uh, we like to say we're doing the work, we're trying to get perspective and stay balanced. And when we get back to family, they always know how to push our buttons. What is it about them? No matter how much we try to rest and come in balanced and braced for it, they seem to know. And I think one of the things that I've noticed is that it's not really that they are consciously pushing your buttons, although I have seen the children have a particular skill for finding their parents' buttons to push. So there is some of that, right? Stimulating that emotional response. 
But in many cases, I really think that what's happening is that we're in this space with the people that we know the best, that know us the best, the people that we tend to feel safe with, even if they get on our nerves. And so some of those walls, some of that structure comes down our more thoughtful or protected responses. And so when they push a button, when something that they say actually triggers an old story, an old event, we're bringing up some old history, we don't have those guards in place. And sometimes it's easy to just let things fly in response. And then, as I'm sure you're aware, things can escalate pretty quickly from there. So one thing above all, whether you're in the planning stage, when you're in the day, in the presence of each other, or after the event, when everybody's talking about what Uncle Ray ate, said and ate and drank at the table, think about, are you really hearing what's being said? Or are you tending to fill in the blanks? When someone asked how you've been or how that job is treating you, are you kicking back to when you got the job and they kind of blew it off or didn't give it the regard that you did or didn't see the potential, right? So be mindful of those old triggers that could be coming up at any point through this process. One of my favorite exercises in this situation and really at any time is the pause and pivot. And you might've heard me talk about this before, but I love this opportunity to pause when you start to feel your reaction brewing, when you start to feel that snap back coming, pause even for a split second and get curious. Ask yourself, what is it that you're responding to? Is it simply this experience or is it something that's older that you're calling back to? Is it a trigger that's being activated? And as you develop this ability in the pause to get curious, you can also get curious not only about your own reaction, but the other person. Where are they coming from? Are they present in this moment? Are they perhaps being triggered? And is that what is driving this exchange? So as you pause and you get curious, what is the source? You have the opportunity then to pivot, to see how you're feeling right now. Don't skip that step, how you're feeling, but also look to how you want to feel, how you want this exchange to go and take a look at how you can start moving it in that way. And if that means drawing on a deeper well of patience, if that means taking a breath instead of saying the first thing that comes to your mind, see if you can incorporate that. And as I always say, this is easier to practice before you're in the event, before you're in the conversation. So I like to practice it in the car because there are definitely triggering situations that come up on the road. And it's a great way to start building that muscle, that awareness, the pause, the curiosity. So you can pause and then pivot in any situation. So, and then let me to offer a, disclo a disclosure or a disclaimer. Um, you know, this is going to be a conversation that I'm having with you, my dear listener, about how you might navigate the holidays more easily. And so let me just be super frank to say, I'm a super diplomatic person. I uh, grew up being the peacekeeper in the family. I'm pretty good at reading people where they are and what they're looking for out of an exchange. And so I'm coming from patterns and habits of giving that to them. And so boundaries are something that I have been working on. And so this might not work for you. You might be someone who feels a lot less need for the filters in communication. And if that is your beat, then I salute you. But in my observation, in my case, this is how I navigate family engagements, social connection opportunities where things start to get a little sticky or prickly and um, try to keep an even keel so there's a little bit more space for people to feel where they are, right? To be less judgmental, to be less reactionary or critical, and to try to hold that space so that things don't escalate quickly. So my advice is not one size fits all. It might not be the best and most authentic fit for you. Really see how this lands for you. Go check in with your inner guidance um, and see what resonates. I'd love to hear back from you. If you have a different practice, if you have a different experience, if something here stands out and you say, maybe that's worth a try, I'd love to hear back. So if you're here on happifiedlife.com, I welcome you to leave a comment here. Or if you're catching the video on YouTube, please join the conversation. 
ultimately, ultimately, I'll probably say that a lot, but there's a lot of different stages in these family gatherings. But really, I see a lot of stress coming from the expectations, the anticipation, the worrying before we get to the table. How is it going to go? What is Uncle Ray going to talk about this year? How are we going to skirt the political conversation? Because we keep hoping that, that will calm down. But, you know, I remember from my childhood, we don't talk politics at the table, which meant that at the table, it held space for a lot of different political views, and that didn't lead to arguments at the table. Really, there are so many other things that we should be able to find to talk about. So hopefully, maybe that's something that works for you. Maybe that, again, if it feels authentic and aligned, if it doesn't feel too guarded and reserved, Really, it's all about how every family works in these dynamics. But even within a family with dynamics that have been sorted, different people feel comfortable with different levels of honesty and engagement. Understanding what you're comfortable with, where your boundaries are, is important. COVID gave us permission to have the holidays that we might have always wished for, right? Some of us love those big, loud, gregarious family gatherings, and some of us really discovered that we loved Christmas morning at home alone. I mean, maybe you can do pajamas with your extended family, but there's just something really cozy about keeping it nice and simple, maybe hopping on the telephone or a quick FaceTime video with family and, and keeping it the way that you like it. And I hear in a lot of different ways that re-emerging has been hard. Going back into the offices has been causing more anxiety. Coming back into full-fledged family gatherings can bring a little bit of stress as you're preparing to go into it. So check in with yourself first and foremost and, and be kind to yourself. Recognize what's going to work for you. And it might mean there's a little renegotiating that has to happen. That might mean some conversations up front in order to make the day a little bit less stressful. So you don't feel like you're showing up just to deliver what everybody else is looking for and compartmentalizing yourself to try to take care of yourself and your little inner child later on. That's not the ideal way to go into it. So I do hope that you're able to find that space to get honest with yourself about what you're comfortable with and then look for a way to redefine it. Start out by being honest. It's not you, it's me, right? We all kind of dread that conversation, but it can be true. It might not be anything that other person does, or it might be all about what that other person tends to do or you expect them to do, but ultimately it's about what you're comfortable with. So try to practice or prepare to have the conversation. Maybe the conversation takes a couple of different attempts in order to get to the root of what you're trying to express. You might say something like, work has had me really busy. I feel unprepared to show up the way that we used to do this family event. You can say something like, I can be available for this, but I really need to see if I can do that. It will depend on my energy, my work commitments, the way that I'm feeling after right? Um, give yourself some time to think about these before you're in the midst of the conversation again, because you don't want these to be defensive and put this on the other person. So again, try to come back to the, it's not you, it's me and, and place this a little more diplomatically. I've discovered that I really don't need more stuff. In fact, I feel really good about making space and living more minimally. Let's talk about gifts that are experiences or something that we can share together. And I'll offer a caveat here too. I've also done the family gift giving where we say, we're really trying to curb our budget. So let's just do handmade gifts this year. Again, check in, ask someone what they'd like for Christmas, but also keep in mind that handmade and heartfelt can still be clutter. So be thoughtful about the gifts that you share and also look for ways to express what you feel comfortable receiving if gift giving is the norm. You might also, you know, if you've spent these last two years really checking in, really doing your work and um, cleaning up your lifestyle, you might need to say something like, I've noticed that my health is better when I avoid X. So I'd like to talk about replacing this part of our tradition. Maybe that's staying out late 
for a particular event. Maybe it's eating too much, eating all day, drinking too much, or traveling too much for these FaceTime events. Um, one thing too that I offer as we do change our way of eating, you know, the family traditions are staples. I have my own. I have a corn pudding that I love to put on the table. And there's a lot of reasons why I need to not be so attached to that tradition, right? It's full of corn, dairy, cheese, and uh, even gluten. It has flour in it. So there are ways that I can replace that, right? Creativity counts, offer creative alternatives, and maybe even take the um, effort to replace something. So if there's a staple that everybody feels just has to be on the table, maybe you can come up with a copy or maybe you can just be prepared to pass on that dish and not take it. Let the host know in advance. I'm really sorry. I love that dish, but it's just not working for me. And try to, you know, Honor what you know about yourself because it's so important as we grow, as we tune in, as we do the work, as we try to be healthy and make healthy choices so we can be healthy all of our days, which you know is one of my real driving motives here in sharing this information. You know, we don't need to make sacrifices today to help other people feel more comfortable or to fall in with old family traditions and then be paying the price not only tomorrow and the next week, but that cumulative a price down the road. And so I'll just share my own secret weapon, if you will, in preparing for the holidays and moving through the holidays and in replacing some of my own traditions. So I recently found out that I have very high blood pressure. And by all appearances and physical effects, I feel absolutely fine. So I was pretty surprised to receive that news. And I've done some real deep looking at the way that I eat, the way that I relax, the way that I move through my life and the habits that I say that I want to keep and then don't follow through on. So one of the things that I have ditched is coffee, which is hard when you're doing all the things, running all the places, trying to do everything that you always deliver. And what I have found to be a powerful replacement, you might have heard me mention it before, is Magic Mind, a wonderful little two ounce superfood shot helps me stay balanced and it's helped me hop off the caffeine train. It does have a little bit of caffeine from matcha green tea, which is a very different effect really. It takes away the peaks and valleys and gives you a little bit more sustained energy and boost through the day. Now, I know your holidays probably look a lot like mine. Work tends to pile up towards the end of the year also. What luck. And so Consider switching this in or adding this into your routine for a little extra support. I've actually learned to love my Magic Mind latte, and so it's nice and cozy. I still get to wrap my hands around a warm cup, but I'm not not getting up to that coffee pot and going through four cups, five cups. I had a pretty bad habit going, ladies and gentlemen. And now I'm better able to call in my focus and creativity and I have that sustained energy so I can keep on keeping on. So moderating stress is really important. And you know, that's my, my passion, my sweet spot and fighting inflammation because stress causes inflammation and that inflammation compromises our immunity, which right now we really need to be supporting. So we've got adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, rhodiola, rosea are beautiful. They help calm the stress. They help maintain. So, you know, we... We feel calm, but lifted, right? It's not one of those false energy sources. We get more energy and focus from lion's mane mushrooms and that matcha green tea. Bacopa monieri is a wonderful herb to support your brain's health and focus and longevity of that health. And turmeric is a wonderful way to fight inflammation. So it even has turmeric with a little dash of black pepper to activate it there, along with vitamin C, D, echinacea, all of this juicy stuff in one handy little bottle. You can pour it into your smoothie. You can add it to a glass and drink it like a little glass of juice. And I've been able to kick the coffee without the caffeine headache, which I have had previously. As I said, there's a little bit of caffeine left, so I'm not going cold turkey. I feel more focused. I feel more nimble as I'm trying to juggle the different things that I do, get these podcast episodes together and out to you. And there's no filler 
no fluff in the bottle. It's sweetened with a little bit of honey. And so there's no ingredients in there that you're going to be regretting. So if you want to try this out, my friends, I'd love for you to join me on this ride, this little evolution of our morning ritual. You can go to magicmind.co slash happified and learn more about these powerhouse ingredients. And when you're there, use my code happified20 for a discount. You'll get the biggest discount if you sign up for a subscription, which is super easy breezy. You can cancel it anytime that you need to, but I love to set it and forget it and know that it's going to be showing up and I don't have a pause in my delivery system. So I'd love to hear from you on that, how you, how it works for you. If you try it out, please send me your reports from the field. So back to our Holly Days buzz. On the day of the holiday. I read an article recently about these conversations, right? About our ability or inability to talk at the table without devolving into arguments. And I mentioned already in my childhood, one of the rules with my great grandma Mary at the table was we don't talk politics because people have all kinds of different opinions and that is perfectly fine. That is their right. We, this country has been built on differing political opinions and it's how we grow, right? I mean, there's always that pendulum effect, but we really do need to see the error of our ways in some ways in order to correct the arc toward good. So is that is that healthy? Is it not? Like I said before, too, every table, every family is different. But this article pointed out, and I'll find the link and share it in the comments, um, what is courtesy versus what is boundaries? So we've really come into this um, space of um, trigger words and safe spaces and needing boundaries in a world where there are needs for those, I do not deny. And sometimes things that do make us a little bit uncomfortable give us reason for thought. So sometimes those boundaries are very helpful and sometimes there can be something to be gained out of a conversation if we, even if we do have to work through some uncomfortable space. Is this the best thing to do at the dinner table with everyone present? Or is it something that maybe you want to continue with someone after and adjourn, right? And let's just keep this between the two of us. We don't need an audience for this conversation. And what is courtesy? Is it simply a courtesy to say there are some things that we just don't feel like talking about on the table? Maybe we need to talk with Uncle Ray first and say, let's not bring up that event that sports team, whatever it is that really tends to inflame the conversation, because we want to have a nice meal that everyone can feel comfortable at this table. We don't need people squirming in their seats and wishing they could flee, right? So if there are some hot button topics for you or that you know trigger some other people, talk about those in advance with the host, with someone who loves to bring that up. You know, maybe when this comes up, we know Uncle Ray just won't kick. Can we try to avoid talking about that? We have some other topic ideas handy because it's good to be prepared so that we can all have a more peaceful day. But you have to have something else to move to, right? If you know it's going to come up, if Uncle Ray always asks why you haven't had kids yet, be prepared to breathe, <laughs> check in on your pause and pivot and change the topic. You can answer it if you're up for the conversation, but recognize you don't have to answer anything. But don't feel like you have to engage. Don't feel like you have to meet anyone's energy with their energy. You have the option and the right to pass, to tag out on that topic. And so it can help to be prepared, to know it might be coming from somewhere. Sometimes those curveballs get served up, but it always helps to recognize something like that might happen, to breathe through it, to have some alternative topics available if you can. Ultimately, arguments happen, right? We don't always agree. <clears throat> Defending your stand is something that you have the right to do. And again, you know, in light of these times that we are in, there's a lot of different perspectives coming from a lot of different media sources. And this can be difficult. So practice also, perhaps saying something like, I understand you might hear other information, but in my own experience, I find this to be true. 
If you want to engage again, without making the conversation awkward for the entire table, you might ask the other person for details about their opinion, for the sources of information, but watch your tone and remember to try to stay curious. Don't lead with making them feel judged or criticized. That brings up the defenses and escalates things very quickly. Try not to sound like you're waiting to prove them wrong. And remember that confirmation bias is real. Confirmation bias is this tendency that we have to hold on to an opinion once we believe it to be true. And so once we have a question about the world or about life and an answer has been provided, it fits in that slot and we hold on to that, right? And not everyone is comfortable with change. Not everyone is open to being wrong and to learning and growing that confirmation bias. We tend to hold on to information and unfortunately, social media has been designed to feed the confirmation bias. So once it knows you like a certain kind of story, a certain source of information, I'm sure you might have noticed that that keeps coming up in your feed. Comments, posts by other people along those same lines, more posts by those sources of information. And so everyone tends to be reading a very different tailored feed because those are the algorithms at work to keep you scrolling. So please remember that they might not be watching the same news. They might not be even feeling like they're living on the same planet that you are. And it is a curated and designed experience that is really driving a lot of the division that we are experiencing right now. That's a good time again to check into your breath, to be patient, maybe to offer some of the sources of your information, maybe to just gently offer other perspectives. Things don't need to be sorted out, hashed out, all you know, resolved in one conversation. Sometimes it's nice to just plant some seeds and let those germinate. Check back in with someone later and see where they are. If it's something that feels really important for you to see them shift their position. Is it possible to agree to disagree? Sometimes some things can't be resolved. Some people have to feel that they're right. Some people just can't let things go. Um, my diplomatic side tends to let those people think that they're right and just hold my own counsel. Um, sometimes people struggle. It's their ego at risk. Um, their fear of change, as I just mentioned, other family dynamics that make them more defensive or stubborn about their position. And so uh, something that I have been told, I've been asked on many occasions, I will offer to you, would you rather be right or happy? In the event of these family gatherings, sometimes we have to let go of being right personally so that we can have a happier experience. So again, an offer. Um, pie doesn't taste as good with heartburn after the whole conversation has devolved into chaos or an argument. So hopefully these tips will guide you through the day of the event. They'll bring you a little bit of perspective, a little bit of pause before that reaction that helps to lead to a little more flow and grace at the table. Afterward, Let's see how it all shakes down, right? What is the aftermath of all of the conversations? Hopefully, there won't be any apologies due. Hopefully, you won't be feeling like someone owes you an apology. It's a terrible position to be in. It can be very difficult because often those aren't received. And I certainly be get behind the encouragement to don't be one who apologizes all the time. Don't feel like you have to apologize for everything. Don't feel like <clears throat> you need to be the peacemaker to come in and tidy things up where other people have had divisions or rifts. That's their work to clean up, right? Sometimes, and only if you feel you can offer one without feeling like you're buckling under pressure, right? Feeling like you're not taking on responsibility for other people's feelings or situations that they have created, but sometimes offering an apology goes a long way to soothing someone else's bruised ego. 
So there could be some peacemaking offered here. And it doesn't have to sound, you don't have to take responsibility for everything that happened. It might sound something like, I'm sorry that you're feeling disappointed about how that turned out. I know how much effort you put into it. I'm sorry that you're feeling unheard about the conversation that you wanted to have, but I didn't feel like this was the time for it, right? There are ways that you can apologize. And I've had butts in those two apologies. Try to apologize without putting that disclaimer in there that puts it right back on their lap. Uh, you don't want to apologize and then make it back to a, but this is what you did wrong. Try to keep it very clear, very light. You don't need to take responsibility for more than was your share in that exchange. And we can also acknowledge that sometimes people feel hurt. People feel disappointed. People, people feel unheard. And that's unfortunate. That's not the result that we want out of these exchanges in a holiday event. And so a gentle apology that can honor both of you can sometimes be a very nice peace offering. And I want to remind you too, ultimately, overall, when it's all said and done, that it's the hugs, it's the connection, it's the opportunity to be face-to-face, -to, -face, to break bread together again, that really matters. And so hopefully, all the way through this process, as you're planning, even if you're dreading having to get out of your pajamas on Christmas Day and go dive into that crazy family circus, Remember that it's been a long time, perhaps, since you've been with this many people. This group has been able to be together. And we have learned over the last few years that we can't take anything for granted. And we don't know that the next Christmas is guaranteed, right? So much can change through the course of a year, a season, even in the flash of an eye. Reemerging can feel awkward, right? We've already taken a look at that. And Change can feel difficult, but that doesn't mean that change is bad. And that doesn't mean that re-emerging has to be painful or a setback. You know, things might have come up for you since you've been able to spend time face to face and have open communication. Be gentle with yourself and where you are in your own process and honor those that you love. You can do that. You can take care of yourself and you can show them the love and the connection that they deserve because they're important people to you in your life. Enjoy this opportunity to come together. No doubt you'll come away with some stories that you will find an opportunity to laugh about later with your sibling, with your partner in crime, with your friends. Those funny stories also are the ones that we remember as we move through and after the holiday seasons. We can laugh about that a little more easily next year when we all get back together at the table. So I hope that some of these tips have felt relevant, felt supportive, have maybe given you a shift in perspective or a little bit of pause so that you can bring some grace home to these family gatherings. As you navigate the holidays and other family events, I wish for you a, an abundant season. I wish for you peace. I wish for you joy and all of the very best that there is to offer and love above all. With much love to you, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you back here again super soon. Thanks for joining us today. To learn more about living life with less stress and more flow, visit happifiedlife.com. Subscribe on your favorite player to catch the next episode as soon as it's out. Sharing really is caring, so please rate and review the show while you're there. And if you know someone else who would love it, please pass it along. Until next time, my friends, keep on shining.